Hello and welcome to News Click. The pollution over Delhi and neighboring areas has gone down a little bit, but so too has most of public interest. And as a result, policy makers are also asleep once again. To discuss this issue, News Click is fortunate to have with us today Dr. Sharad Gutikunda, one of the foremost experts on air pollution in the country. Welcome, Sharad. Thank you, Raghu. Let me begin by asking you, when the air pollution over Delhi was at its peak about a month ago, the media was full of all kinds of information, particularly the print media. What I wanted to do today was first to cut through the chatter and ask you what are the main sources of pollution in Delhi around which policies can be framed to control it? So it is, air pollution is a complex issue. I mean, there is no one straightforward answer. Sure. But when it comes to sources of air pollution, that's a very straightforward answer. We know where the pollution comes from. So if we go by a basic, a baseline, your main sources are your vehicles, both your passenger transport and freight transport. The road, the, the dust resuspension that happens because of these vehicles on the road, construction activities, waste burning. So even though it's officially banned, we have a lot of waste burning that happens sure. pretty much everywhere. So in response to this set of pollutants, yeah. what would be the major measures you think are required to tackle these? So I think tackling pollution, we can't just uh, can finger point one sector. All right. of these sectors need to be right. uh, at the same level. Right. So we can start with a sector that we always talk of, transport sector. I mean, we are looking at a big chunk of passenger transport demand happening in the, the national capital region of Delhi. Okay, so the country-wise, if we have close to 10% of the registered vehicles, passenger vehicles, are in the NCR region. Yes. Okay, it puts a lot of pressure on that. So we need uh, a cleaner fuel for that. So we do have the auto fuel policy, uh, which is supposed to come into effect by 2020 and pushing your Bharat 6 fuel. And there is no reason why that cannot be pushed advanced further, as much as advanced basically for 2017 or 2018. So you have a, a big dim, uh, drop in the emissions from that. So within the transport sector, you have to also worry about not just the fuel, but also number of vehicles and usage. So there is, it's, it's hard to put a cap on the number of vehicles which are on the road. I mean, we can't tell people who don't buy a car or don't bring out your car. But I think programs should be in place to cut the usage of these right. vehicles. So like give incentives for them to not bring out their car or not bring out their motorcycle uh, by aggressively promoting the public transportation. So you, you need at least 20,000 buses to have a good, clean, reliable, safe, public transportation system where you actually have a significant change from buses and cars to public transportation system. Right. Okay, that's on the transport side. Uh, we need, uh, again, we have program emission standards in place for power plants and industries uh, for, for better regulations, which are supposed to come into effect by December 17, 2017. So even that, I mean, we, we should make sure that that happens and that it doesn't get delayed. Okay. It's the same thing with the garbage burning as well. Yeah. A one sector which actually belongs to the municipal corporation. That's right. Okay. It's completely under their control. They can't point fingers at the center saying they're not giving us permission or they're not allowing us to do this. This is cities, under cities ordinance. So they should have better management programs for waste. And same thing with the construction sector yeah. as well. Just coming back in a second to the transport, yeah. most of the attention has been focused on particulate yeah. uh, matter. True. But we also know that there's a fair amount of nitrogen oxides, True. which are major pollutants, particularly from diesel vehicles. Yes. What do you think can be done about that? Two things. Either we get rid of or rather reduce the usage of diesel in the city or we have a faster injection of cleaner diesel into the city. So that's the uh, major um, shift that has to happen. That's right. As well as yeah. vehicular fitments, et cetera, to reduce uh, NOx emissions. Reduce NOx emissions, Tailpipe, basically. Uh, yeah. So with the Bharat 6, 
almost every vehicle will have to come with an SCR, That's selective right. catalytic converters, and that will significantly drop your NO2 emissions. That's right. So, because while we are on the topic, in Delhi, in the past, ozone was never a issue. That's right, but now it's now become it a major because, issue. Because, yeah. because your NOx emissions are going up and your volatile organic compound emissions are also going up, primarily from the transport sector, and that is basically compounding itself with the weather and you have ozone. So if you look at 10 years ago, we never bothered about ozone, but I think now we have to start worrying about that right. as well. And what about construction sector? What kind of measures can be taken on that? Um, it's also a very it's a tricky sector. So main thing is that um, the coverage of the construction sites have to be there uh, when the um, debris is being transported from the construction sites to the landfills. The vehicles are supposed to be covered so that the debris doesn't fly off and they're also supposed to be wetted so that you don't have some resuspension right. going on. But we often see that on the roads, especially at night, trucks going at really high speed, <coughs> not covered and this debris is basically falling on the roads. Right. So in the morning you have more vehicles on the road, you have more dust resuspension right. that's happening. It is a bit of a vicious cycle. So uh, let me ask, apart from construction dust, hmm. is there uh, some estimation of ambient dust, mm -hmm. uh, which as we know in Delhi tends to be fairly high sure. because yeah. of its proximity to the mm. deserts and to dry regions around sure. uh, the city, as well as a fair amount of dust emanating from within Delhi itself sure. because of unpaved sure. surfaces on the sides of roads. Uh, there is, uh, but it's not a straightforward calculation. Yeah. So for the at least the dust which is on the roads, we know how many vehicles are moving or their usage and you can account for a resuspension factor and saying, okay, this much dust is coming off. For the dust events, dust storms that are coming from the west, uh, this is something which is linked to the meteorological parameters. Right. And uh, it keeps fluctuating. Sure. In, a, in months like April and May, uh, we've seen, at least this year, a uh, very uh, high number of dust events coming. And some days it was almost close to 40-50% of the dust coming from the west. Right. So as of even today, the winds have actually picked up from the west, which is why we have much less pollution in the last couple of days. But it also is bringing a lot of dust from the west. And, exactly. and in the models that we are running, um, at least for today, we are assuming, we are, we are accounting for about 15 to 20% of the PM 2.5 is actually your dust coming from outside of the region, outside the region. But with all the variations uh, mm -hmm. apart, one can safely say that a fair amount of these mm -hmm. uh, particles come over Delhi. This True. is, I think, fairly clear even from satellite maps. Is that True. right? True. Compared to ten, not forget ten. Compared to two years ago, the kind of satellite feeds we have access to can really tell us how much area is under fire where is it under fire and when is it under fire and we are able to actually use that information we know the land use of those areas is it an agricultural land or a forest land or an urban land and where the fires are being detected and we can use that information to assess not only the emission intensity of those fires combine that with the meteorology we know where it will move and how far and we're able to detect that. We do have a good amount of data feeds coming in and we're able to assess it. So, uh, which also means that uh, we can actually see the impact of these fires within 12 hours of this detection. That's right. And we can actually take measures in advance knowing what's been happening for the last 10 years. The Minister for Environment, the Union Minister, made a mm. statement in Parliament just a few days ago in response to a question about this. And it occurred to me that this was a slightly disingenuous answer when he seemed to suggest that there is no very definitive data that shows that agri-residue burning in Punjab or Haryana impacts on Delhi. Contrary to that, I think we have enough information to say. I would have thought so. Yeah, so to a certain, I mean, we are still modeling. Obviously, yeah, we're sure. not measuring. But I think we have enough information from the meteorological departments and from satellite feeds to, to, to come up with a 
not with an exact number, at least a range of exactly. how much pollution is I coming mean, from those fires. We may argue about whether it's 15 percent or 25 yeah. percent, but it's a substantial amount and it we is. know that. It is. And it's going to happen every year unless something is done about exactly. it. Exactly. I mean, we've been seeing that for the last 50 years, I mean, it's more intense in the last few years. That's right. It's going to happen. In your mind, what kind of institutional arrangements would be required? Mm -hmm to be able to control this because clearly this is not a single agency job. No. Uh, it will require multiple agencies to coordinate and work together. Yeah. So how is that likely to be and can you throw some light on this from experiences we know from other countries or regions of the world? Well, so centrally speaking, I mean, we do have the Central Pollution Control Board, which actually has the mandate both to um, monitor the pollution levels and also have the mandate to uh, propose scenarios or propose action plan that other departments can follow. I think uh, when we are talking from a managerial perspective, I think Central Pollution Control Board is obviously like rightly placed to right. take the lead, but it is still uh, has to coordinate with many different organizations. So having said that, I think we need a group which actually has um, as a power to impose or, exactly. uh, or to s more authoritatively say that, okay, tomorrow's pollution, I mean, it doesn't have to be literally tomorrow, but next month or next year's pollution is going to be so much. We know it and this is going to happen. So we need to target sector X, sector Y and sector Z and we need actions from these sectors. So that kind of planning has to happen like from the beginning. I mean, there has to be a, a long view on how do we address this air pollution? And that's not going to happen with a with one group, which no. is um, which primarily focuses on only monitoring. Exactly. So it, it, there has to be, I think, a, a central group. Um, maybe it already exists. We don't, I don't know, uh, or it can be formed with uh, probably players from all these stakeholders coming together and and sure. and put a plan forward. The reason I ask this is not only with reference to the pollution problem in Delhi. Absolutely. But yeah. we know that the yeah. problem that we are experiencing in Delhi is also being felt yeah. in other cities sure. uh, across the country. Sure. And yeah. we need mechanisms to be able to deal with it. The low inversions that we saw last week in Delhi, it actually has been pushed. That's right. And we are looking at some of the monitoring data coming from Kolkata and uh, Patna areas. Their pollution is right now, today, is three times worse than Delhi. That's right. Because everything is getting moved pushed there. there and then getting suppressed there. So the, the phenomenon that we are seeing in Delhi is not very unique. It's just that um, very high presence of media, more number of That's institutions, right. researchers, scientists, I think they're all sitting in Delhi, studying in Delhi, and then studying Delhi a lot more. Um, hence the focus is more on Delhi, but the problem is definitely not restricted to Delhi. The, the common air pollution sources that we have uh, discussing for Delhi also exist in pretty much exactly. all the cities. You need cleaner fuel for all the cities, you need better implementation of full emission standards for industries and power plants in all the cities. Your domestic cooking and heating problems exist in other places as well. So, as I and said, more public transport. More public transportation. I mean, it, it's a key thing. And waste burning. Right. I mean, let's not forget that. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sharath.